evening and welcome to the golden years of Hollywood. Of course, tonight our first film is not Hollywood, it's straight from England. And it's The Lady Vanishes, directed brilliantly by Alfred Hitchcock. And there are many people I know who put this in the top five Alfred Hitchcock films ever made. You're going to love it. What I didn't realise, of course, when I saw it for the first time in the 50s, it wasn't just a thriller, it was a comedy thriller, and some of it's very funny. I think you'll adore it. And then later on tonight, we have Watch on the Rhine with Paul Lucas and Betty Davis as our Academy Award winner. And then, for those of us who still are watching, in the early hours of the morning, those parts of the network still taking our programs, I have for you a top thriller from Jules Dessin called Thieves Highway. And that is a brilliant movie. I wouldn't miss it. It's worth staying up for. But there's something else tonight. I recently previewed a delightful film being released by Roadshow throughout Australia over the next week or so. The film is called Pretty Woman. And these are the stars. First of all, Richard Gere, who's never been more appealing than he is in Pretty Woman. He's delightful. And with Richard Gere in this film, Julia Roberts, whom people thought was absolutely fabulous when they saw Steel Magnolias. Well, this film, I'd love to have the opportunity for some of you to see it as a guest of Roadshow and myself. So I prevailed upon Roadshow, and they're very nice about it, to let me have 50 double passes to see Pretty Woman. So what I'm doing tonight is I'm giving you a question about The Lady Vanishes, and secondly, I'm going to let you have the address to send your entry in the intermission segment and at the end of the film. So make sure you've got your pen and pencil and paper and so forth for that, but include your name and address because they can't send any uh, tickets to the Invisible Man or the Invisible Woman. Right, having said that, we shall get around to the question before the film starts. Here are some of the leading players of The Lady Vanishes. First, we have Margaret Lockwood, who plays Iris, and Michael Redgrave. It's rather interesting in this film. Michael Redgrave, you know, he actually admits that he didn't try to give a proper performance during the course of the film. Now, what's all that about? Well, you see, he said that actors, British actors in those days, in the 30s, didn't take movies very seriously. In fact, they thought that was slumming to appear in a movie. But Paul Lucas said to him during the making of the film, listen, you're not acting at all. I saw you doing Chekhov on stage and you were great. You know, what, what's going wrong in the movie? And Michael Redgrave claimed in his autobiography that you can tell at what point in the film that he starts giving a performance. Maybe you can spot this yourself. Let's see. I like Margaret Lockwood and she's terrific as Iris. And there on the right hand side of the screen we have Paul Lucas who crops up later in Watch on the Rhine, the film for which he won his Academy Award as Best Actor and he is absolutely outstanding, recreating his role from Broadway. And here's the lady herself, Dame May Whitty, who'd already made international fame really with great performances on stage. And of course, with this film, Night Must Fall, and several other grand performances, particularly for MGM, Dame May Whitty was at the top for many years. A wonderful actress, and you'll love her as Miss Froy. Here are some interesting people for you. Basil Radford and Norton Wayne. Sidney Gilliatt and Frank Launder, the scriptwriters, liked them so much playing their parts of Charters and Caldecott in this film that they put them into two others, Night Train to Munich and Millions Like Us. See the man standing behind there? Cecil Parker. Remember the Chilton Hundreds? Oh, he did so many good things, particularly in the late 40s and early 50s. Cecil Parker. Now, there's a lady standing behind Basil Radford and Norton Wayne, and here she is right now behind Norton Wayne. You know who that is? That's Lyndon Travers. Now, Lyndon Travers was the star of one of the most notorious British films of the late 1940s. And I'm referring to the film version of James Hadley Chase's novel, No Orchids for Miss Blandish. She played Miss Blandish. The film was not good, but boy, did it create a stir when it was made. I don't believe at that time they could have made it in America. They were so conservative in that part of the world. Now, see the lady there? That is Mary Clare. She plays the Baroness. At the wrap-up party for the movie, Hitchcock spiked a drink and she got hopelessly tiddly, I believe. And everyone thought Hitchcock hadn't been gallant at all. There are many other interesting people in the cast, but one that I love particularly is Googie Withers. I think a lot of us like to claim her as our own these days, even. And, of course, she's the wife, as you know, of John McCallum. Well, here's Googie there on the left-hand side of the screen, and I know you want me to tell you who the other girl is. Well, her name is Sally Stewart, and she plays the part of Julie. So there are a lot of interesting people in The Lady Vanishes, 
And Catherine Lacey plays the nun, and I'm rather fond of her too, but we could go on forever about that. I think you'll enjoy The Lady Vanishes. They say it's the only film that Hitchcock made where he didn't have anything to do with the writing of the script in the first place, and secondly, it was the first time he got his name above the title. I wonder if that's true. Well, whether it's true or not, I think you'll enjoy The Lady Vanishes, and here's your question. Who won in the test match? Who won in the test match? What was the outcome of the test match? There's your question. I'll give you the address at intermission.